Hello everyone, welcome back to the world of Serenia for another and probably last look at Wizard and the Princess. Now in our previous streams we have completed the game, uh, but I think there's just one thing that we didn't see, uh, one puzzle that we didn't solve strictly in the way intended because we could kind of walk our way around it, but uh, we'll come to that in a sec. I also wanted to have a, a quick debrief on the experience of playing the game and um, and what I think of it as a work of art, because I think that's there's some interesting things to mention anyway. So, but first we'll go and have a look at our, our one little missing puzzle. Um, I've taken it back to our very first save slot. The only thing we've achieved is uh, we've found the large rock, but that is quite an achievement if you um, if you remember the experience of searching through that desert maze for it. Why do we need a large rock? Well, we're going to come up against a large snake, which. Uh, Depending on how you interpret the perspective here, uh, it could be the size of a house, and we're going to um, we're going to smite it with that rock. Yep, that's uh, that's gone to its eternal rest now, poor rattler. Um, I don't think we need the rock uh, ultimately, so we're going to pass that by. I'm going to pay attention to the um, text that appears because we do need to drink water here. One of the uh, uh, periods when a thirst mechanic is important. Now to show you what I want to show you I am reliant on um, a random event so chances are it's not going to come up straight away so I'm going to uh, walk, walk around this area and do some of the regular stuff that we we know we need to do that we've done before. Um, first of all we're going to get this stick. Um, I guess the, the eager-eyed and keen of memory uh, among you uh, may realise that the stick is an item we, we never had cause to use throughout our adventure. I think it might be the only item we didn't have cause to use, um, which is interesting. And that may be addressed soon. Um, but first we're going to look in a hole in a cactus. We're going to get a cracker. We're gonna. I still haven't found any other way to get back to the main room we're looking at other than type loop room, which really doesn't work in this context. We're gonna go north. There's a friend to make here. Well, I like the the way the snake drew in. I don't know if you saw, but it looked like. Um, I think it was just the way it was drawing in, but it looked like the tongue darted in and out, which was pretty cool. So. On uh, on revisiting this and um, coming to the scene again, I'm not sure that this isn't our most significant interaction with another character, because we actually get dialogue from them, and I mean, so it, we're doing something and getting a response in return. So we get the rock. And when you when you remove the rock from the snake's tail, the snake looks at you and says, "I am the king of the snakes, and to repay you, I will give you." A magic word. Hiss. Then he leaves. But that's um, that's direct and it is explicit. Um, and it's interaction. We did a we did a good turn for the snake. We get something from the snake um, that we uh, didn't know we need at this point, but will come in handy in the future. Um, and yeah, everything else is quite elliptical. You just kind of go up to someone. And you perform an action, or most often you don't get the chance to perform an action, um, and then, well, the uh, whatever happens happens, and the character usually disappears or just ignores you. Um, and there's this strange, this strange gap between um, yourself and the idea of this interaction that should be happening. Um, Okay, let me move my map a little bit so I can see see where I'm headed. So I'm on the rocket one. Um, there's not really anything. Oh, I need to go west though. If I'm oh hold on, hold on. Be in the right window. Yes, yeah, so this is where I notice. So let's get a note as well. This is um this is a pretty densely packed area, isn't it? It's quite a lot to to do here. 
Right, let's see if anything happens here. No, if anything happens here. No, but there's a lovely chasm. Um, I'm gonna try having just kind of having a look around. You can't even say you need to look. You want to look at the sun, which is not. I do wish this game had a slightly larger vocabulary. Um, I think it would just make it seem a bit broader, a bit. Um, a bit more encompassing with one of these ellipses. The, um, the means of communication is, is limited. Well, I hope this isn't going to take too long to get to the point I want. I might, I might be doing laps for a while. Um, so that is, this is stick, stick country. So we go west from here, and I think we can do we can do this bit north. Ah, oh. hang on, did where was? Did I ever? I don't think I saw this screen before. That's really interesting. That was a rattlesnake here. You'd better watch. How did I find a screen I'd never been to before? Anyway. Uh, there is a rattlesnake here. You had better watch out. So I think this is the case in which we can use our stick. I, I guess I'll show you actually because um, I've tried this. You can try and uh, I've tried different ways of uh, actually sort of telling you the game what I would do to defend myself against the snake. So just poke the snake, slap the snake, and hit the snake. Uh, are you crazy? Okay, so if you use the stick, this should... You hit the snake on the head with the stick and drive it away. So the, the thing it just uh, complained at me for, I, I could do. So, uh, I'm sure I haven't seen the screen before, so that's fascinating. Um, look, hole? There's a note here. <gasps> It's going to be the other half of the, sp the, oh my goodness, I did not know I was missing this. Um, get note. Oh no, hang on, I need to drop the, I probably need to, need to drop the other note first, don't I? Otherwise it will get very confused. Um, hang on. Okay, so if I read note, so this should be the one with, oh, look note. Yeah, that's the one we saw before. And then if I, um, can I drop note? Um, did that work? Yeah, it did. Okay, look hole. So hopefully this should, yeah, register separate. So if I get this note, note, and look note. Yeah, that would work if you stuck that bit on top of what we saw before. You could conceivably get hocus out of it. How you, so? Uh, I take back any complaints I made about not being able to work out that that half a word should be hocus because this is the other half of the clue, um, which somehow I I missed. How bizarre! Um, and uh, but how you would know exactly that make, that makes a bridge across a chasm? I don't know. So this hang on. So this. Uh, Area was above. I'm just gonna to to move the map again. As I've. Oh, that's weird. So I thought it's this one. This is the one where we enter enter the desert, right? 
in the centre of our screen, centre of our map screen now. So I thought the one with the pyramidal rock was directly above this, but it's not, is it? You get the one with the hill first. We get one of the notes, and then you get the another rattlesnake. Crikey! That used me stick. Then you get one with a pointy rock that's over to the right of the screen, which is not what I've got either. I've got the locket as there. So can I go north from here? Then it's the locket one. Can I go north from here? No. Well, that's just utterly bizarre because that's more more screens. Then you get, if you go, well, let's just out west. There, so I think this is the same uh, screen as I expect. I think it's the one where the um, uh, note we got, the first half of the note we got was. And then south of that should be where we release the trap snake. Yeah, that looks right. And south of that is the cactus with a hole in it. And you can't go any further south than that. No. How very strange. I'm just going to test it out one more time. Because I've... Um... You know what? So I think I never did this as a um, row all by itself. So I... I must have just come at it from the side every time, this row, and just assumed that all the bits married up, but there are actually, oh, I think there's only one extra, is that one extra space? Well, there you go, so I learned something that even I didn't know about from, from the walkthrough that I looked at, and that's, that's the mystery of the stick and the snake. Let's switch to the canyon for our contemplations of the game as a whole. Do I think it's a, a good game? Uh, I'd say not especially, but it is an interesting game, partly because it is part of the, the formative guest out of early video games and uh, especially early uh, adventure video games. I always think that the, uh, the primitive quality of these really early adventure games kind of flies against the uh, thousands of years of traditions of um, board games and puzzles and riddles and, and all sorts of things that humans have come up with to entertain and enlighten each other. But I guess the stumbling block, the hurdle that these early games are trying to clear is how to make that work interactively with a computer and specifically with adventure games, how to cite puzzles within a narrative such that it's one continuous story. I think that's what these early Sierra games are trying to address. And the result is there's not many overt puzzles sort of discrete from the story. I'd argue perhaps that the mazes are discrete from the story. Although they're, I'd say the first, because there are three mazes in the game. I'd say the first two are more like expressions of a survival mechanic. Because you're trying to find your way through a desert to find resources. And then you're trying to find your way across an ocean to another location. Not that you really know you need the resource or that you're trying to find the island in the first place, which is another issue. The third one is kind of diegetic because you're entering the lair of a supposedly evil, magically powered adversary. So it kind of makes sense that they've, they're have they going to trap you in a, uh, in a maze with teleporters. I'd say the reticence to have recognisable puzzle structures in the game probably comes from a desire to have something new that is narrative and explorative, although I don't think on either front the game really succeeds at, at hitting those those aims. And what it means for how the game functions is that there are lots of odd pieces of information that, that don't connect up. They're, they're almost like beats of a plot, um, and they're almost like clues in a puzzle, uh, but they, they fall short of either. Um, and that just makes it considerably challenging to to complete. 
I also don't think that's an impediment to the success of the game because uh, especially at the the time the uh, the novelty of having a game of this type which had very few antecedents to have that in your home was great and you you would invest a large amount of time trying to work out exactly what it was trying to tell you if anything and how you might get to the end if any any one of the mazes is kind of a a microcosm of the the whole while it is certainly frustrating when things don't make sense there's kind of no logical progression between the steps you have to take to complete uh, an action or make progress. There's a nice meditative quality to adventure games when you just have to stick with it and keep trying things and keep trying things until something clicks and you'll see false clues and you won't perceive intended clues and it will it will be a challenging time but yeah there's something quite relaxing about that experience. And I certainly enjoyed playing it on stream where I felt I could give myself the luxury of time to just kind of work things out um, to the point at which I was happy to stop working them out. And that's, I guess that's the other thing. So playing it in the modern day with the immediate availability of a walkthrough on the internet gives me kind of the best of both worlds. I can have that experience of wandering around and trying to figure out by myself but as soon as I know that I'm I'm finished with a particular challenge, as soon as I know that I don't want to invest any more time in, in trying to, to reconstruct an obscure set of thoughts by the designer, then I know I can I can just look at the walkthrough and I can get to whatever the next step is. And these games are, I think they're really best played with company. Certainly, uh, I have fond memories of, of playing them uh, with other people in my youth. And it's kind of nice to do it on stream. So even if there's not not really anybody in in chat at the time. It's just nice to um, talk about what you're doing out loud, as that that kind of recontextualizes the game for you and can can help uh, you progress. So the other thing, the probably the most interesting thing for me about the the primitive nature of of games like this, and specifically the Wizard and Princess, is that it creates its own sense of art, and its own sense of space, um, and it becomes quite unlike anything else because it's it's not falling into formulae that have been established since it it's it's quite raw it's quite clumsy but it's something looking for its means of expression looking for its outlet and kind of by accident it reveals something sublime every now and again which is is wonderful it's it's odd because i i i can be quite pretentious i do like to talk about the sublime in art sometimes especially in video games but I think it really, I, I, there was a couple of moments where I really did have, um, I experienced a moment of the sublime. And it's odd now coming back to the, the footage, editing the videos much later on than I streamed them. Because that experience isn't inherent in the recording. I didn't feel the same things again going back and looking at the recording. I just remembered the feeling that I had at the time. The context is really important, actually. If you had only got this a copy of this on disc back in the day, um, say you'd you'd borrowed it, and you didn't have the manual, you didn't have the context, the framing story of this time loop where the hero is um, is reset by the wizard um, and has given kind of key equipment that has to go back through the mission again. If you didn't have that that context, that it would take a little bit away from you, but you'd still have the weird elliptical quality of the interactions that you have, the um, the discreteness between locations and between actions where people come and go and kind of the only evidence of them is a, is a brief text description. This is no animation as such, it's kind of a, a stillness in the sense that each each moment is locked off in time. So you've still got that, that weird sense of time uh, that pervades the whole thing. I think it's really important how kind of um, bright and airy the graphics are as well. This has a uh, these all these screens have a white background, whereas in the previous game, Mystery House, they all had a black background. There's lots of dithering. I think a much more expensive use of colour as a result that gives it kind of colour temperatures and a greater sense of space and depth and vibrancy. I wouldn't say liveliness because everything is very still. It's more like walking through a set of old photographs. That's kind of more the feeling of it. So embedded within that, there was the moment when we saw the rainbow which is, is so crudely drawn. And yet, within the context of everything you've seen, it's kind of magnificent, and it's just there. And it's, yeah, that was one moment of the sublime. And the other was 
the puzzle that Yui had to solve in the tower that is so confoundingly illogical and with seemingly no clues that there's an empty room, but you have to return to the room. And when you do return to the room, there's a bird in there, a, a dove. I, I always um, interpret that image as a dove. And then, for some reason, to make progress through a magical, like a, a conceptual magical barrier, really, it's not even, a, not even visualized, you have to put on a ring you've found, rub its stone, transform into a cat, and eat the bird. But all that happens off screen. The, um, the only difference is that the bird is frozen on screen in one place in one image and has disappeared from the screen in the other. And there's the, the total illogicality of, of that, but also the, the range of sensory associations with wearing, rubbing, the ring, transforming into a cat, um, and then <laughs> consuming the bird. All those associations, and I think in my mind, some kind of equation between that image and um, the paintings in Magritte gave me a very strange feeling and that was that was something sublime that I don't think I've had in in video games before they don't normally give me that kind of questing feeling and that sense of wonder that I'd I found something completely new and the game kind of doesn't end well because it doesn't make a lot of sense that you'd have to put on the shoes and say the spell and that would transfer you back to the start of the game but the fact that that is the way it has to end. You do have to go back to exactly where you started. Circularity of that is quite lovely and kind of ties off all the weird the weird time manipulation stuff that's going on in the game. So I really appreciate that, even though, like much of the game, progress is not organic. If you have any thoughts on the game, then please do leave me a comment to, to share them. Um, I'd love to love to hear what you think about it. I do intend to play more of these early high-res uh, Sierra adventures, because they're fascinating, really. Don't know when, don't exactly this. There's, there's one in particular that I really want to make sure I play. Um, but whatever our next adventure is, I look forward to sharing it with you. And until then, take care. Bye-bye.